For the setup and unrack of the squat when understanding the technique, again, understand that these are general. And the general is a great place to start from, and it's even great for the advanced lifter. But it's not gonna be the same for everybody, and you need to find your little special sauce and your special recipe. The first thing is footwear. You can find a more advanced discussion on footwear in the advanced topics video. But the rule of thumb on footwear is you want something that's good and sturdy. Running shoes and basketball shoes are terrible. You want something that has a sole, that has no give, no cushion. A big key on this is you wanna treat your warm-ups like they're a max. So anytime that you're taking the bar out, that you're setting up underneath the bar and you're getting ready, even if it's an empty bar, I treat the empty bar like it's 1,100 pounds and you should do the same. You can find an advanced discussion on bar placement in one of the advanced videos, but the general rule of thumb here is you want to find a shelf on your rear delts to carry the bar. You don't want to carry it on top of your traps and you don't want to carry it too low. You can find a nice shelf that your rear delts create when you pull your shoulders back and that's a great starting position for the bar. For grip width, the rule of thumb, you want your hands as close as possible that allows you to get under the bar and hold the bar where you want. The closer your grip is gonna be, the tighter you're gonna be able to create your back and the more stable the whole shelf and bar support and bar control is going to be. For some people, including myself, I need to go all the way out here because that's as narrow as I can go to try and get under the bar. But the rule of thumb, bar placement on your back comes first the ability to get under the bar comes second. And third, you wanna get those hands as close as possible while allowing those first two rules to be in effect. For stance width, you wanna be a little wider than shoulder width. If you're too narrow, it's not gonna be your strongest leverages for a heavy competition squat. And if you're too wide, you might compromise some of your hips. Again, this is highly dependent on the lifter. You need to find what works for you. The best starting position is a little bit wider than shoulder width. For foot position, you want your feet to be angled out a little bit. If they're straight ahead, you're gonna to put too much force on your knees. Your knees are gonna to wanna to travel forward too much. If they're too far out, it's gonna be very compromising on your hips to try to get below parallel. So a nice position around 45 degrees or narrower is a good starting position for the foot angle. When you get set up underneath the bar in the rack, you want your ankles to be directly below the bar. When you get to a heavy weight and you need to take the bar out of the rack, if you're too far forward or too far back, it can create a lot of unideal leverage arms on, on your low back or even your feet to get the bar out. When you get to a heavy squat, the more it's gonna be a restriction on the setup, the bar control and the walkout, the more likely that is to become the weak link in the squat. So you always wanna treat every squat, even if it's a warm up, like it's your max and give yourself the strongest position, the most stable position to create control with that bar when you come out of the rack. So your ankles should be directly below the bar. Once you're under the bar, and especially as you approach the bar, you wanna have nothing but confidence and aggression in your mind. That's controlled aggression. But you have to have the utmost supreme confidence that you're going to get this squat, and you cannot let any seed of doubt creep into your mind. It's all about confidence. Once you get your ankles directly below the bar, you get the bar position on the back where you want, you get your grip width, and everything is tight and contracted. You take your final deep bracing breath, and you lift the bar out and walk backwards with it. No more than three steps. I prefer two steps. Three steps is still fine. The way I like to do it, I set up in the rack with my stance width that I'm going to squat with, the exact same width. I come up with the bar, and I take two steps directly backward, and I'm ready to squat. If you're gonna do a three-step walkout, which is totally fine, you're gonna start with your feet a little more narrow than you will squat with. The first step you come out with, get your depth away from the rack. The second step you come out with equals your feet. And the third is you get your stance width. So again, I prefer two steps, but three steps is still fine. You wanna limit the time under tension and the duration. Every second that your body is under a maximal load on the squat, every second is incredibly valuable. So you want to minimize those. You don't want to get in a hurry. You need to be under controlled, but you don't want to waste energy or waste effort. The two most common mistakes that I see with the setup is that if rounding or hunching occurs during your squat, a lot of times it's because of the setup and that can be due to your head position. So you want to make sure that your head is neutral and your spine stays neutral the entire time. But if you, if you experience a lot of rounding or crunching during your squat, you may want to experiment with a little bit more head up position. 
The other most common mistake I see on the setup is too much squirminess and too much adjustment after the lifter has walked the weight out. So they will walk the weight out and they continue adjusting their feet. They feel like they need to move their feet a centimeter this way, this way, change their toes this way, this way. Um, again, those little adjustments, they're probably not gonna make a big difference unless you get totally off whack with your setup and you really need to get your foot in a different position. But spending too much time squirming under the bar once you've already walked out is wasting precious seconds on performing your heaviest lift. So the more that you can create repetition, the longer you're training, the more likely it is for those steps and those feet to align every time exactly where you want them. And that is how you want to get set up with your squat and not spend too much time squirming and readjusting yourself.